Okay, I think now I'm recording. Okay, yesterday I showed them this um, thing that's on our website and you can get to it. And it is kind of like a thing that breaks down like what you have to have to get each point. The, um, I'm going to pull it up for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Like I went through the rubric and I went through and kind of put it in like easy, straightforward type words um for everybody and so basically all the things in yellow you have to have in order to get that point in green you do not have to have all of them but you have to have some combination of them does that make sense okay so um like for the thesis you have to have a thesis like it where it doesn't say you have to have an introduction it doesn't say you have to have you know anything like that but you must have a thesis that if a person said put your finger on your thesis statement you could okay um, your thesis has to make a claim like it's almost like an argument essay just like you did kind of with your research paper where you were saying it's this way right that um, you know Hamlet uh, the violence in Hamlet shows how violent society was period that's my claim right then you have your claim has to be provable like is there evidence can you say this is not just my opinion this is a for sure thing and if you can do all three of those things, then you get the point for thesis statement. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Okay, so then you go to like evidence and commentary. It's exactly the same as like, um, like we've always written for like EOCs and standardized testing and stuff where it's like, you know, make your point, give a piece of evidence, explain the evidence. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. They just want it to be. Um, you know, sophisticated and not just this shows that and stuff like that, but it's the same idea where you're just giving your evidence and from the passage and then explaining how your evidence supports what you've said. Does that make sense? So that's kind of what this one is. That's where the bulk of your points comes from, is from that. And so there's a couple of things. You have to have more than one point. Like you can't just say, um, like we were looking at that one about their eyes were watching God. You can't just say, um, that Janie had a complex relationship with her husband because um, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my thought. Mm -hmm. You can't just say that Janie had a complex um, relationship with her husband because he beat her. That's not enough. Like there has to be more, like you have to give several different instances. You know what I mean? Like it can't just be one compelling instance. And you also have to kind of make those instances come from different sort of literary devices. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you can't mm -hmm. just say the author uses imagery to juxtapose the way the relationship used to be to the way the relationship is now. So that's one point, but then the author also uses metaphor when he describes Janie in terms of a flower and how that flower, you know, blooms or doesn't bloom. The author might also put it in a setting where the setting is incongruous with the rest of the story. And so that shows how out of whack things are. Like you have to kind of have more than one um, point. Does that make sense? Like yesterday I was telling, I was using the analogy of like a cancer test. Like you go and you, you know, they, they say you have cancer. We know because this test said it, but you don't just want that. You also want blood tests and DNA stuff and x-rays and you know what i mean like you want to see the evidence in several different come to you in several different ways and so that's kind of what you have to do is give multiple pieces of evidence that kind of cover multiple different things does that do make think, sense yeah. do you think it would be a good idea to kind of make an outline first and then write everything yes I'm, gonna, like, um, yeah. I'm, I'm working on making y'all kind of a kind of like a little like graphic organizer, you don't have to use it, but uh -huh. then you go through and kind of write it in. You know what I mean? Like, right, okay. It just, it just is going to depend so much on what kind of question. We've been talking a lot about character because a lot of those um, question twos have to do with character and theme. Um, I've mm -hmm. also seen that a lot of them have to do with like relationships between characters, like the complex relationship of these two characters. Or the, complex I'm relationship gonna, of the character. I'm going to have to review that. <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. But, you know, they don't care if you can identify these things. They don't care if you can use the vocabulary. Okay? Like, you don't get any sort of extra credit for knowing that something is, you know, 
synecdoche or da 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 da. They don't care that you know those words. They care that you know that that is a comparison that the author is 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 showing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Um. So I wouldn't focus on trying to just like know a bunch of obscure, you know, like character type terms. Does that does that make sense to y'all? Yeah. Okay. So then. So that's where the bulk of your points, that's five of your six points, right, is having a thesis statement and then that evidence and commentary. The last point is kind of like the unicorn point that's really hard to get because it's kind of subjective. It's the sophistication point. Um, they want you to have looked at complex complexities or tensions. Um, so that would be like if, if you got into like conflict or something like that, that might be a good way to get that in there. You know what I mean? Um, they want you to put the work in a larger context, which you may or may not be able to do based on the information that you have, because um, something I saw or read said that you're not probably going to have the, um, like a bunch of background information about the passage. Like you may have the title yeah, of the passage. Yeah, thing where it said they're not going to give us the name of like the book where it's from right. or the author. Or right, so that's going to take away your ability to context unless you're, unless it's something about like women or race or something like that that is you can put it in context just based on what you know of the world not it's yeah. not it doesn't adhere to one certain time period does that make sense mm -hmm. um because you know they don't want you to cheat i mean you know they want to make it kind of obscure so my, you know, what my biggest fear is that they're going to give us a passage because this has happened to me before where like i read it and i have absolutely no idea <laughs> <laughs> like what I'm reading or what's going on like oh shoot how am I gonna write an essay on that well you know what do they say that all passages are like somebody did something so you just have to figure out who did what <laughs> and go from there but, um the so you know unless it's about like women or race or something like that that you can kind of place in a larger context it's going to be real hard to 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 really give it a lot of context to get that point um a kind of an easier way to get that point is um to mention alternative interpretations and that's as simple as in your within your argument because they don't want you to just put like one sentence that does that within your argument say although some readers may think da 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 da, da Janie really da 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 you know what i mean or although mm -hmm. you know it may seem Janie's husband is on her side in actuality he's this that or the other Kind of like if you can get some of those all those statements in it's showing that you understand that there is a different way to interpret this but you think that way is wrong okay mm -hmm. um and then you get sophistication points for um kind of like confidence and persuasiveness so that's going to really just come down to like writing sophistication is the point they try to give you to sort of kind of make a distinction between people who it was right and it was great you know what I mean? Like, um, so to me, some big things when it comes to that comfort, confidence and persuasiveness would be like avoid using I think, I believe, or it seems or stuff like that. Just just say what it is. Um, people automatically think you're more confident if you don't add those little um, I think. They know that's what you think because you're writing it down. Um, and so it, it weakens your argument to say those kinds of things. Um, and so what we did yesterday was we kind of went over this <clears throat> and this is on our website. So you could, if it was me, I would probably print something, even if it's not this one, but something like this out so that you could have it laying next to you, you know, so you can kind of go back at the end and say, okay, yeah, I did this. I did this. I did this. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. if nothing else, it'll make you feel more confident and it'll help you kind of feel like that it's just steps. And it's not this big, huge, overwhelming thing. It's just a matter of hitting certain steps. Um, I find that that helps me. The other thing that I showed them yesterday that we were going to talk more about today is um, these like questions for analysis. Um, if you're in the situation where it is like that, it's like you don't really understand the passage and you're kind of not sure where to go with it. If you can figure out what topic, which of the things they're asking about, are they asking about character or setting or point of view or what, then you can use some of these kind of questions to help you figure that out. Does that make sense? So the question that we looked at yesterday was about Janie and her husband. And so that was a character question. 
So then you can look and say, okay, number one, how are characters physically described? And then if I'm talking about how they're physically described, I know that I'm discussing characters. Do you see what I'm saying? It kind of, it, this may help you to look at some things when you kind of don't know where to start first. Um, I don't even remember where this, this, where I got this from, but I thought it was a, you know, when I went through and was looking at, we looked at two of them yesterday. And when I went through and was looking at, there was one about two sisters. And I was like, okay, I don't really know where to start with these sisters. Well, then I looked at it. Okay, well, did it physically describe it? It did. Well, what did their physical description mean? What, how did it relate to, you know, what we were supposed to know about them? Then you could say, okay, let's look at their language. Let's, and it's just kind of like a checklist where you can look at each sort of, you know, aspect. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a, another thing that they kind of frown upon or, or don't give you the benefit of the doubt on is, um, they don't want your writing to seem like a formula. Does that make sense? They don't want to say this shows that in every other sentence. Um, they Maybe want you so to kind of vary, you know, vary the vary your sentence structure and stuff. And that this kind of does that. So if you're talking about character, it kind of gives you like some examples and of, of wording and stuff like that. That might not be something that you need. A lot of y'all are pretty good writers and you can just kind of go. Um, but you know, if you need a place to start, kind of. Um, so. This is kind of, that's kind of what we talked about yesterday. Then we looked at, um, then we looked at, let me see if I have it. Okay. Then we looked at this passage. Um, this, their eyes were watching God passage. Um, I'm going to leave it. It's on our website. Why don't y'all take a few minutes and read it so we can talk about it and just kind of talk our way through it. Like what would we put, what, how would we write our thesis statement? What would we do? Does that make sense? You don't have to write it down. Just kind of think about it and um it, it won't take you very long maybe five or ten minutes probably not even that long um so you do that and i will don't look at my notes i'm gonna stop sharing my screen so y'all can't see my notes and then i will finish typing my notes and we'll talk about it is this in the ap section mm -hmm. uh, it's under resources it's the very last thing you see it mm -hmm. says like www okay do you see it kaylee i got it okay all right read that the prompt or the like the whole thing the whole thing it's short okay. it only take a minute uh times and scenes like that put janie to thinking no about no, no, the no, no no read it to yourself oh no <laughs> i thought you were telling me to read it out loud i was like what <laughs> no read it to yourself and figure out what you would say and then we're going to talk about what you would say okay okay Okay. 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 Think of your um think about the liter think about the, the topic and then take a few minutes and we'll talk about it. Were you saying okay to me or okay to somebody else? To you. Oh, okay. I was, saying, I was saying that I read it. Oh, okay. Well, think of what you're going to say. You got like three or four minutes. As long as it takes me to finish typing this. Mm -hmm. mm.
Okay. How's it going? Uh, um, am I just thinking of ideas or? Yeah. Do you th did you think of something? I thought of like um, a good one, but like I was thinking about the other one and I don't really know what to choose for the other one. Okay. Well then let's talk about it. Hold on. I'm going to bring my, bring my thing back up. Should we like in our essay, should we have like at least two literary? I would, I would, I would try to have at least two, even if you can't name them, um, at least where you're kind of referencing at least two different ways that the author does this particular thing. Um, okay, so for example, um, okay, our prompt says, Janie's complex attitude toward her husband, Joe, and it specifically asks us about literary elements and techniques, right? So we know we're going to kind of throw away, throw around some of those words like foreshadowing and flashback and stuff like that, right? Okay. Um, so what is their relationship like? He's um, to her, but she just hides it and she just keeps it to herself do you have you ever read the book mm -hmm. okay well that's good actually okay do you get the impression that um that they were happy once um i i feel like maybe they were. They were, and then something happened and he just turned on her okay so we do get i get the impression that they were happy um, from things like where it says um, time came when she fought back with her tongue as best she could. Like it hadn't always been that way. The time eventually came when she did that. And also there was something about laying in the daisy. The bed was no longer a daisy field for her and Joe to play in. That kind of makes me think that their relationship was this like positive rolling around in the daisy situation, right? And it's not now. Okay, so um, so they have a they have a a relationship filled with strife. Her attitude toward him is is um, kind of she's almost cut off from him, right? Like she's kind of locked down her emotions from him. Um, so how does the author show us that? I said um, imagery as one of my um, okay. And which Im what image would you point to? What imagery did you? So one of the ones I said was when she says that she pressed her teeth together and learned how to hush. Mm -hmm. And then when he slapped her face. Um, okay. and then, so those are both, um, those are both images of um, like physical type images, right? I mean, I don't know the word for it, but you know what I'm saying? Like those are both, like you think of the act of teeth being pushed together tight. You know what I mean? It's almost like a grimace. And then, you know, him slapping her is obviously a physical thing, right? So those are both sort of images of of sort of the the physical tension or angst between them, right? It almost has an aggressive sort of feel to it. Right? I think that's perfectly reasonable. Um, what about if we go to the very, very, very beginning, okay? and um, look at the second paragraph. So, so gradually she pressed her teeth together and learned to hush. So that's what you picked out and that was a good one. Um, what about the spirit of their marriage left the bedroom and took to living in the parlor? What do you think about that? Is that personification? It is. Mm -hmm. And what, how does it, how does it tell us about their relationship? Why would the author have chosen those words? That they like to other people, they look like a happy couple, but like mm -hmm. in reality, they were like they weren't on good terms. Right. So like, we could say, right. So we could say that you know, Hurston uses personification to show the extent to which they have become divided, almost like they are not two people sort of living in the same situation, the same marriage. Right. She even um, calls the spirit of the ma marriage a person almost in the same way that a person could leave a marriage, right? The spirit has left the marriage, like the love and whatever. So you could talk about the personification. So now you've got imagery and you've got some personification, right? Um, what about, I said flashback for the daisy field comment. The bed was no longer a daisy field for her and Joe to play in. It was a place where she went and laid down when she was sleepy and tired. 
I said that's a flashback to earlier times and that the author includes it to show us the difference between the way the relationship was when it was young and new and they were frolicking around in the fields versus now when they're just like laying in bed next to each other because they're just exhausted. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you would have to show like the good side and the bad side. Right. Really so right well in in this case that's what the doc, that's what the author's doing is showing us the good side and the bad side not just the bad side because you don't know something's bad unless you have something good to compare it to right mm -hmm. and so it's there the author's putting those two things next to each other to show us the difference okay um okay i also said um that the author uses a single uh, moment of realization that's not a literary technique but it is you know what i mean like we don't have a word for that but it's it's something that authors do to show us something is important so what's kind of the thing the where where could i point for my quote or my evidence about that so much you said a sudden realization mm -hmm. Ooh. uh she stood there until something fell off the shelf inside her that'd be a good one okay um or you could do she was 24 and seven and seven years married when she knew right when she knew um, what about this petal open thing? He uses a lot of what kind of imagery? Flower imagery. A lot of flower imagery, right? So I would have, I mentioned that in mind, that there was a lot of flower imagery and how that flowers, it's the difference between flowers being open, how Jamie was, Janie was in the goodness of the relationship of being open and then now being like closed off, right? And um, so not only, not only is their, is their situation bad, she has she has closed herself off from him it's basically dead right like she's not trying to actively state it would you agree with that mm -hmm. okay then i put um or i would mention something about okay this whole incident the the sort of incident where he slaps her right um is his feeling is disappointment at this meal right Okay, because like the supper is sort of his like refuge or whatever, and she she ruins it, and he's disappointed. And I put that by using that particular event. So I don't. I guess you could say the author chooses um, to use the details associated with Joe's disappointment because it reinforces that she's disappointed in what. the situation or like how yeah the asked. marriage right and who he is um she goes it goes on to say something about um when jody tumbled down and shattered right she's it's the the vision that she had of him is she she's just as just as disappointed as he is in the meal she's that disappointed in him as a human as as the love of her life as this as her husband um okay what would be the why would the author have chosen to use third person limited in this passage? Maybe it's like for the audience to have like a kind of like looking in kind of experience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like on the situation. Mm -hmm. So almost when they, when an author uses third person limited, it's almost like they, they're, they're pretending that they're giving you an objective view, right? Because you can see everything, mm -hmm. but they're only telling you one person's feeling, right? So we're staunchly on Janie's side, whereas we don't see anything that's going on with Joe. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's a technique. That, that was a choice the author made. So you could say, you know, by choosing to, to write the passage in third person, limited, um, you know, Hurston is, um, places the reader firmly on the side of Janie and um, alienates Joe's emotions even further or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. okay then i put um she 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 does this she this isn't really personification but she gives physical um credence to to non-physical ideas does that make sense to y'all um she, like when she says she stood there until something fell off the shelf inside her then she went inside there to see what it was you see what I'm saying? So where did she go inside of? Wait, it was like her person, like her, her thoughts. 
Oh. Yeah, she went, she searched inside of herself, right? And so it's almost making it like it's a physical thing um, to to sort of look mm -hmm. into or to investigate. She really had to probe into like her emotions about it. And so that might be worth, you know, mentioning. Um, also, you could say there's some foreshadowing here at the end. Even if you haven't read the rest of the book or whatever, there there's some foreshadowing where it says, um, she found that she had a host of thoughts she had never expressed to him and numerous emotions she had never let Jody know about. Things packed up and put away in parts of her heart where he could never find them. She was saving up feelings for some man she had never seen. Right? So that's almost foreshadowing is Joe is not going to be that man, right? That oh, does she leave him? She does. Later in the book. Um, she, Joe's her second husband. She has three. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, but it does kind of show, do you know what I'm saying, that there is going to be some further action. Even if we don't know that she goes and gets another husband, that even if she didn't get another husband, it shows us that she's saving her feelings for, for not him, right? That there's going to be some further thing. So you could kind of put that. You could put that there's some foreshadowing that shows us that she has already emotionally sort of moved on from this relationship, right? So her attitude toward him is, is, um, is, is almost um, emotionless at this point. Does that make sense? Because she's not like, oh my God, this mf -er slapped me. I'm a killing. You know what I mean? She's just like, this happened and whatever. Um, and then it kind of continues on here too about she had no more blossomy openings, right? So that flower imagery is throughout. And then if you want to place it in context, you could talk about flower imagery being associated with what? virginity virginity femininity sexuality mm -hmm. right and that by using the flower imagery the author is showing us you know this how this feminine side of jamie has been has she's allowed it to sort of close up because of the way that she's been mistreated by him does that make sense the author use like the flower imagery like throughout the book or is it just in this one part no he uses it kind of throughout but as far as we're concerned for question two, it doesn't matter. Could point. you say that the flower imagery like juxtaposes with um, this bloody imagery? Yeah, like the kind of like the the softness of the flower imagery and the natural. I said like um, in my little notes, I said that the flower imagery is about nature and it juxtaposes with their relationship and how the the inner inner their their connection is not natural anymore it's not it's like stunted and and quiet and it's not this natural flowing thing does that make sense so it's kind of a juxtaposition of the natural and the mm. unnatural i guess mm. um you could talk about that you know the all the references to the bed you know could, could you could talk about you know that the, it's by referencing you could say you know by referencing flowers and beds and blah, 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 the author is discussing Janie and, and Joe's like sexual relationship and how it mirrors what's happening with them emotionally. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's all, all of the, but do you see, okay, so let's pretend that we were going to write our little essay and it was going to have all that stuff that we just said. Do you see how it, we've got some imagery, we've got some flash, flashback and foreshadowing. We've got some flashback and foreshadowing. <laughs> We've got, um, we've got some, um, we've got some juxtaposition, right? We've got some kind of almost like symbolism. So we've got several different pieces, right? That add up to this whole, that basically we're, we're saying they have a bad relationship and here's how we know, right? Um, and that's kind of what they're looking, um, that's kind of like what they're looking for you to do. Okay. Um, so what I did, I read it and I, you know, I wrote on mine. You won't be able to write on yours. Um, because you, while you can print it, I don't know that it's worth the time. You know what I mean? Like, and because what, what always happens, printers never work. Um, so when you go to do it, um, what we kind of talked about yesterday, and if you have Miss Jones, she already kind of talked about this too, is that the best way to do it would probably be to have like more than one window open because you can copy and paste. Um, 
So for example, if I have my little like Google Docs or whatever open over here and I'm making my little notes, um, then when I get to these quotes and stuff that I want to use, I can copy and paste them. You know what I mean? Um, and that's probably going to help you. I'm just looking to see if there's anything else I put in my little notes that we didn't say. Would you recommend us typing it instead of writing it? Yes. I would not fool with writing it. Because when you think about it, you can type faster than you can write. It's going to be more legible, right? Um, it's just, I think it's just, I think that that's an advantage you're getting and you should use it. Um, they did say that you had to you put your, what your last name and your page number, I think, at the top of the yeah, um, your ID. Yeah, yeah, your ID at the top of your paper or whatever. Oh, I can't spell notes. Should we do that copy and paste thing or should we just like save it as a like word file? I would, I would open it as a Google Doc. That way you know it's going to save, right? And so have my untitled Google Doc over there. And then I would probably just. Here are some details. And I would probably just copy, you know, just copy my big block of text and paste it in their thing and go on. You know what I mean? But then you also have it should something happen or should they come back and say we can't read this or you know whatever who knows um and and you know that no, like your power is not going to go out and you're going to lose all your work or something like that you know what i mean um because all that stuff could happen you know last year we had a tornado during during the euro test so um you know i, I think that that's kind of that's that's what i would do so i would probably um, kind of have my notes, kind of know what I'm going to say. Um, I might would even, and I know this is going to sound stupid, I might would even wait till I kind of had an outline before I wrote my thesis statement. Do you know what I mean? Like kind of know where you're going before you, because the worst thing you can do, and I, I do this myself, I find myself doing this, is you've got this thesis statement, and then as you write, you go somewhere totally different, right? And so it might be best. So if we were, like, let's say we had our little notes, well, I know I could mention personification, right? I could mention uh, juxtaposition, uh, flower imagery, um, moment of realization. I'm probably not going to mention all these, but good, right? Um, third person limited. So foreshadowing. So then when you go to write your thesis statement, you could say, you know, through the use of literary techniques like, you know, uh, narrative choice, um, flashback and foreshadowing, you know, imagery, metaphor, whatever it is, and you could do two, three, five, seven, it doesn't matter. You know, the author um, portrays Janie's complex attitude toward her husband, you know, through this, da 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 da, -da. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. And I gave um, on that um, sheet, on that um, like checklist thing, I don't even know where it went, but on that checklist thing, it has an example uh, thesis statement so that you could just kind of plug in, you know what I mean? You're not going to have the title and stuff. You, you'll probably have the title. You probably won't have the author's name um, because they'll at least title the passage, even if they don't try to tell you what it's part of, you know what I mean? But you could say, you know, in this passage, so and so, the author, if you don't know the author's name, you say the author, um, you know, presents juxtaposition, um, narrative choice, and flashback slash foreshadowing um, in order to show the complex and emotionless uh, relation, attitude Janie has toward her husband. Um, ultimately illustrating that their relationship is dead or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, so you can kind of follow the, the pattern. Then you know that you're going to write about each of those things. And so then you could kind of group these. Like you might want to put imagery personification, those together. You might want to put um, like uh, third person narration point of view stuff together. And then you could put like your imagery stuff together. You know what I mean? And kind of, kind of arrange it like that. Yeah. What sort of things should be said in the intro paragraph, like before the thesis? I honestly don't even care if you write an intro paragraph. That's what Ravdeep mm -hmm. and I were talking about before you got on here, is they don't care if all you do is write the thesis statement. Okay. 
Um, so, you know, it's better to spend your time having a good thesis statement than, you know, if, and then if you're done and you're sitting there thinking, okay, I got a little bit more time, you could always go throw some kind of, you know, a couple of sentences in there to just kind of introduce it, right? Um, mm -hmm. I always think it's easy to do some throughout time. Throughout time, literature has always discussed the relationships between men and women, right? And then, you know, go into your thesis statement or whatever. So, but that's the, all they're looking for is the thesis statement. Um, and that's been forever and ever. That's not just with the new rubric. That's always been the way AP is. Uh, it's, it goes against my English teacher soul, but, <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, so if we wanted to get those sophistication points, what could we kind of talk about? Line of reasoning, maybe? No, we've already, we've done our line of reasoning. Our line of reasoning is that oh. just does everything that I'm saying support what I said in my thesis. Mm -hmm. But... Okay relate it back to like the world or like the mm -hmm. universal so human experience you could relate it back to the roles of men and women in relationships and you know the the gender discrepancies or something like that because that's something that even without knowing the time period or whatever you could be pretty confident that you can say that this you know mirror society that you know Janie um you know Janie endeavors to fulfill the traditional female role and make this dinner and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? So you can kind of pull that in there. You could also pull in some, although like, you know, although, um, although, Oh, you could, I would probably talk about, um, where it said, but looking at it, she saw that it, that it never was the flesh and blood figure of her dreams, just something she had grabbed up to drape her dreams over. So you could say, you know, um, something like, you know, um, although Janie may be somewhat responsible for the downplay of her marriage, um, you know, because she doesn't, she, you know, Joe was just something she hung, hung her dreams on, comma, and then go with, you know, why she's not ultimately responsible. You know what I mean? That makes sense. A little bit of sense. Yes, not very much sense. Okay, the other one we looked at, we looked at this one. It is go to on our and okay on our website. Go to that next to last thing. Hold on, I'm trying to get there. Okay, down here under resources, this one, this has all the number twos in all the AP tests since 1971 or whatever. Um, I would not start at 1971 if I wanted to see some examples, I would start current and look back. Um, but the, it just takes a long time to open because it's kind of a big file. But yesterday we read um, the one from 2019. I told them to read it and we would talk about it some. Um, so let's look at that. Something else we talked about yesterday was looking at this, at the question. And I don't know about y'all, but I do this. I'll be halfway through my essay and be like, this is a good essay. I, you know, I'm, I'm winning, right? And then look back at the question and go, hold on, is that really what it's asking? You know what I mean? Like you kind of catch yourself halfway through and realize mm -hmm. you're not answering the actual question. You're answering the question you want it to be. Um, and so we kind of talked yesterday about, about that, about the importance of answering the exact question. Um, a lot of times they'll give you literary element examples like, style, diction, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't have to mean anything. You don't have to use those. Um, wait on this to open. Why open? Why are you talking about some open and acrobat? Just open. Just open. Mm -hmm. 
I will hold still not open. <sighs> Have you done the demo for update? Mm -hmm. Have you, Kaylee? It was pretty easy. Um, yeah, it was pretty straightforward. I, I did, would, but like I didn't do the thing where I uploaded all of my stuff and all that. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like the only stressful thing was there. like when I was trying to upload. You were trying to what? Mm -hmm. Like when I was trying to upload the photo, because like I took a picture of my work, like just so I could do it for like calculus. Mm -hmm. um, but then I clicked the wrong thing. I clicked attach file. So it wasn't like accepting the photo. And I was like, why isn't this working? And then I had to like go back and then like read the instructions again. And then it said, click the photo button. Okay. Well, then that wasn't too bad. And now you know that. So it's not a, it's not going to be a thing day of. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I would, I mean, unless you just type really slow, I would type it, you know? Because then you can move stuff around, too, if you type it. You can kind of play with it a little bit. Yeah. I'm sorry this is taking so long. Oh, but, like, for calculus, like, I really want to write it. Yeah, because doing like math on a computer. Out, is... Like, all the math. Yeah. Yeah, no, I would write it for that, definitely. Because, I mean, who could do that? Not me. I don't know why this is taking so long to open. Anyway, it doesn't matter. What I was going to say was, um, are y'all coming? Are y'all coming tomorrow? Are y'all planning on being in the Zoom tomorrow? Yes. No. Yes. I'm gonna try. Okay. Because Kaylee's like, it depends if I'm awake. Um, the um, because what I was gonna say is, if y'all will read, what? if y'all will read that 2019, even though it's taking forever to open it, if y'all read that one, let's um go through and do the same thing, but I want you to try to write a thesis. Could you do that? Okay. And um, and we could talk through mm -hmm. that. For this one or for the next one? For 2009, we'll talk through it. We'll talk through it tomorrow. You think that'd be okay? Okay. The um, because yeah. and if you need to look at those um, look at those questions on that um thing that I showed you, like about character and stuff like that. See if that helps me. I'm going to go back and reuse it and kind of see, because it's, this one's not as easy as Jamie was. This one's a little bit harder. It's about two sisters. Um, it's older. It's from 1885. Um, I have a feeling they're probably going to use something more pretty modern on the test um, because they're not going to want something that everybody's read and everybody's seen and everybody knows about. Um, so, yeah. You can give us a Wattpad excerpt. <laughs> yeah, they are. Somebody's fixing to get famous. Um, it's kind of like, what? We hear some fan fiction. Somebody's fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that would be really funny, actually. And somebody said, I, I read where some teacher said that, <laughs> that they were going to, that she had a feeling they may get someone to write the passage. Which I can't, oh I don't God. think they're going to do that. But you know, that sure would be helpful because then they know what they wanted you to say. You know what I mean? They'd be like, I'm going to put some similes in here and <laughs> some metaphors, you know, and then they'd know what they wanted you to say. Anyway, okay, so your job. Look at 2019. We'll talk about 2019 tomorrow. Um, the other thing that we will do tomorrow is. What is tomorrow? Friday? Yes. Okay. What let's what I'm gonna try to have done for you tomorrow is the is some kind of like graphic organizer. Like um, you know, almost like a little outline or something that you, that would work. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna try to put those that stuff up there about the thesis and just kind of line it up with the rubric so that if you wanted to have it next to you you could just like fill it in jot your notes down on it and then go from there you know what I mean because I think that's going to be helpful to you because when you think about it especially as you're reading let's say if I know I want to talk about imagery 
then if I had on a piece of paper and I could write imagery and then list all the imagery that I saw, that might be a, you know, a helpful thing because it, it'll also help me to kind of um, organize my thoughts, you know what I mean? Um, so that's what I think. Is that a plan? Okay. Mm -hmm. Are y'all okay? Mm -hmm. Are y'all happy and positive? Mm -hmm. Or are y'all tired of being home now? Yeah. Okay. But I don't know. Lindsay said now she really has nothing to do. That like school stuff's not happening. So she's mm -hmm. extra bored. I said, well, <laughs> I understand that. I just yeah. Whatever. Oh, I don't miss the school stuff. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> Well, you know, but you're not losing. Do what? With Samantha, but I'm, so I'm trying to plan a senior trip right now with Samantha, but we're kind of scared that things aren't going to open up. Yeah. Um, like, uh, by the time we go. Well, as long as you get, um, fun. you know, as long as you get, like, traveler insurance or something like that, you know, you might be able to get some pretty good deals right now. And then if it falls through, you know, as long as you don't lose your money, it would be worth it to you know, look now, the, um, we, once we kind of know what's what, um, we're going to have some kind of big, like, senior picnic type situation, um, I don't know, Mr. Ilgen Fritz wants y'all to get together again as a group, so, it's like a really we just all idea. decide on a day when we're returning our books, he hasn't that. told us yet, but he will, because only, I think, 50 people can be there at a time. Only 50 people can be on the campus at a time. And they have to, um, only 10 teachers can come. And they have to maintain the six-foot distance. Well, and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, what are you going to do? Walk around with a ruler? Like, no, stay away. Big hula hoops. Stay away. But, um, yeah, so he hasn't told me that date. I'm hoping he's going to tell me that date before Saturday when we do the little awards or whatever, so that I can share it with everybody down. Um, yeah. So we're going to do the Maggie. Oh, are you going to do the awards on the same thing as last time? No, we're going to use something different because, oh. you know, it, it's, it's a, <laughs> and hopefully it'll work better, but we don't know. Because until everybody gets on there, you don't really know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the time of day and the weather outside and, you know, all that, you know, it's, it's a lot harder to live stream things than people think it is is what I have discovered because <laughs> um, everybody's internet works different you know it's it's whatever mm -hmm. but um we Miss Jones put the slideshow together and um and we we put up a thing today saying like stuff's coming out but of course now all the teachers are emailing talking about um can we present our awards well we can't really have like a five-hour award show um so Ilgen Fritz is telling me which ones we can do and what we can't. So that's what we're doing. But did y'all both go vote on your senior superlative stuff? Because that's the main thing we do. Yeah, I started to, and then I got overwhelmed because I couldn't think of like. You who just answered the ones that you felt like answering. You didn't have to. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just I was like, I don't feel like doing you're this right now. That's what you're telling us. I started to vote and then I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I'm Pretty guilty much. of much. <laughs> but I'll do it. I'll do it later. Okay, we'll do it. All right, that's all. Okay. Mm -hmm. See you later. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.